Hey procrastinators, Laura here with STP. Kidding, not kidding though, if you're watching this video and this is the first thing you have done to study, you are going to give me a coronary. So I really, really hope things work out for you. I have to say, I think that this is gonna be my best last minute tips video I have ever done. Be ready, you guys. You're gonna get tons of juicy content from me for free, which is crazy. Um, but this video is going to be good for the May SAT and for the June SAT. These are the last two tests of the 2023-2024 school year. So stick around if you're taking either one of those. All right, but first, this video is brought to you by Preply Digital SAT Prep App. Are you running out of questions on College Board's Blue Book exams or Khan Academy? Do you hate sitting down to a computer to take full length practice tests every time you wanna prep? Preply is the perfect solution for you. It is a daily practice app that you can access right from the palm of your hand. So you have over a thousand questions that are unique in both the English and the math, designed by SAT experts, and there's so many extra features in this app, you guys, besides questions that you can practice. There is a personal AI tutor, Wisby. We've got high probability vocabulary flashcards and math concept flashcards. We've got a Preply leaderboard if you wanna compete with other users in the app. And we've got an analytics page so you can see how you're doing, plus a skills assessment and a study plan. I mean, you can't go wrong with this app, guys. So if you want to do a little bit of casual prep or if you feel like just practicing, you know, a handful of questions when you're in study hall, log into Preply, you know, download the app if you don't have it yet. I promise you it's going to be the best thing you did for your SAT game all day. So you can join over 40,000 users who've already downloaded our app. I'm going to link it up here right now and I'll throw it down in the description for you. All right, let's get into these tips. Do me a favor and comment cram in the comments below if this literally is the first day you're starting to study for the SAT. All right, let's get into these 10 tips. Tip number one, you can use a guessing strategy called majority rules anytime you're on a, an apostrophes question. Let me show you how it works. So as you can see, I'm in an apostrophes question. My first step is I'm gonna look at every single variation of the first word stories, and I'm gonna cross off oddballs. I notice that this stories is different than all of the others and this one is different than all of the others b and d are the same to each other so i'm going to keep those then what i'm going to do is i'm going to look at all of the events and i notice that c is different and d is different these two events are the same so that means b must be right because b has the most in common with the other answer choices all right my next tip for you is a punctuation trick if you're on a punctuation question and you see a period with a semicolon eliminate them right away as long as the answer choices look the same and they don't have any other variations like different words to them or anything because a period and a semicolon both separate two complete sentences they function the same way so if one was right they would both be right but you can't have two right answers and multiple choice so just cross them both off all right tip number three this is a transitions trick so if you're on a transitions question eliminate any answer choices that come from the same category or function the same way so when I'm looking at this question right here, I'm gonna cross off furthermore and similarly because they're both support transitions. And so they work exactly the same way. So again, you can't have two right answers in multiple choice, so just get rid of them. Tip number four, I want you guys, when you get to an English module, to jump right to number 15 and start there. That way you'll save the hardest, most time consuming reading questions for last, and you can pick up as many points as quickly as possible with the grammar, transitions, note taking, and words and context questions. All right, tip number five, I want you guys to use process of elimination on the English. So don't go into an English question trying to figure out which answer is right. I want you to try to figure out what three answers are wrong. And there are so many different types of wrong answer choices that you need to look out for. So 
Here are some of the types that you will see. You are going to see answer choices that are off topic or irrelevant. You are gonna see answer choices that say the opposite of what you need. You're gonna see answer choices that are too broad and general and not specific enough for what you need. You'll see answers that could be true, but there's not enough information in the passage. So if you don't have textual evidence in the passage, don't pick it. You're gonna see answers that are true to the passage, but they're not true to what the question's asking. And this happens a lot on function of underlying sentence questions where they'll ask about the function of sentence two, but they'll give you an answer choice that talks about what sentence three was talking about. So be very careful there. A big one though that you really need to look out for is what's called half right all wrong. So the whole first part of the answer choice is gonna be absolutely accurate to the passage, but please don't jump the gun. Make sure you read the entire answer choice first because a lot of the times the second half is completely wrong. And so if you jump the gun and you make an assumption too early, you're gonna get that one wrong. All right, tip number six, you should be using Desmos and I would recommend using it about 40% of the time on the math, especially towards the end of the second module of the math. So the few key times that I think that you should be using Desmos are on systems of equations and inequalities, when they talk about a constant A, B, or C, because then you can use the slider, or when you just have a really complicated algebra problem that's gonna take 20 steps to solve, try to put it into Desmos and figure it out graphically instead. All right, tip number seven. I'm in another grammar question right now, and here's the strategy, guys. If you see a semicolon already in the sentence, like see how there's one right here after the word holiday? Pick the semicolon, because semicolons separate items in a list, and that's what they are doing here if you already see a semicolon in place. All right, tip number eight. I want you guys to use the pronoun trick when you're on a subject verb agreement question. This is a sure fire way to get it right without making a mistake. So all you need to do is look at the four verbs and pick the one that's different. So I can say he brings, I would say they bring, I would say they have brought, I would bringing doesn't count because you wouldn't say here they bringing so just get rid of that one so the one that's different is the singular one brings and if you want to check in the sentence the actual subject is one because of the world's largest folk art festivals is just extra information describing more about the one i call it an of clause some people might call it a prepositional phrase but you want to cross off of da 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 Anyways, use the pronoun trick and you don't even need to worry about that. All right, tip number nine, make sure when you sit down and the proctor goes around passing out scrap paper, you ask for extra scrap paper. Guys, one sheet isn't gonna cut it. You should be writing down all your work on the math. You should be writing down as, as much stuff as you can on the English, especially on those dense reading questions. I really want you to like, annotate as you go so that you're reading actively and not passively. So when the proctor comes to you, just ask for three more sheets. Tell them you need extras because you've used more when you've been practicing and they will give them to you. And finally, my last tip, tip number 10. You guys might not like hearing this, but listen, don't study too much on Friday night, okay? When it comes down to it, you want to be in tip top shape the next day for the test. You need sleep. So when, if you're going to cram all night and stay up till two, three, four in the morning, you know, how much more are you really going to learn when you can get a full night's sleep? So at least cognitively you are on your A game. So just try to relax the night before, take a bubble bath, call a friend, watch a movie, do something that's super relaxing. It's kind of the same if you were running a marathon. I wouldn't tell you the day before your marathon as your trainer, hey, go run a marathon. I would tell you to carb up and eat a bunch of pasta and just chill. So just keep that in mind. Your brain is a muscle. You need to let it rest before you go into the big day. All right, guys, that's it for now. If you made it to the end of this video, I appreciate you so much. Type in the comments 1600 because you are a 1600 in my heart. And good luck on your tests. Until next time, happy prepping.